Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Eclectic Knitter Podcast. Um, I'm Raylene, of course. I'm using my laptop camera again. Um, I don't know if it gives better quality than the other camera I have. It's just a lot of work to pull it out. It's not really, but it feels like a lot. So um, I'm going to record like this and hopefully it will work. Um, I feel like I've done a fair amount of knitting, but I haven't finished anything um, for like a first. Um, you might hear some noise from the dog. I have the, it's a gorgeous day outside. As you can see from the reflection in my glasses, he is <laughs> sitting by the open patio door in the sun. Should have maybe put in my contacts, but I didn't. So there you go. Um, so I have the patio door open. And so you might get some outside noise. There's a nice cool breeze coming in. You might hear some noise of him chewing on bones or playing with his alligator that quacks like a duck or, yeah, I know. It's an alligator, a stuffed alligator. And it doesn't have a squeaker in it. It has a quacker. So it quacks. He loves it, though. He hasn't ripped it apart or anything. He, like, shakes it around, and, yeah, he's very cute with it. Anyway, um, so there's no finished objects. We're going to do whips, and I have two things to show. Um, one is kind of an adventure. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to talk about a book that I've been reading, and I'm going to talk about... Um, some needles, like I'm trying to clear out my needles and place them with needles that I love instead of needles that I do not love. Um, and then we'll be talking about, I feel like I need to move this over because I'm not quite centered. I'm sorry. Mm, that's a little better. No, I feel like I'm not straight. Anyway, I'm going to stop, try to stop fiddling with this. It's sitting on my lap, so <laughs> on a lap desk. So, you know. Ugh. Now I feel like I'm crooked. All right. I'm not going to move it anymore. I promise. It might move because my legs move when I'm moving, but I won't move it on purpose. <laughs> Sorry. So, whips. Um, I have a hoe. Um, so I pulled out a skein of... Um, lollipop yarn in her beefcake base in the um, Karma Chameleon colorway. It's a 10 stripe repeat. So this is from here to here is two full repeats. I actually really love just these three. <laughs> I would totally buy a self-striping sock with just that pink, the chartreuse green, and the teal. I would totally do it. But, okay, so their, her beefcake base is supposed to be a sport slash really heavy fingering. I've never knit sport weight socks before, but I have, I'm acquiring a good amount of sport weight sock, self-striping sock yarn. And then it comes with this little, so here's the cake. It does not look as pretty anymore. Like they're not as picky about doing the this the pretty gobstopper stripey ball all the way down. Nomadic Yarns does. I don't... I don't know. Whatever. And then it comes with this little mini of the teal. So... I have the first sock finished. Now this sock was an adventure. I started it and got till about here on 2.5... US 2.5, I don't know what the millimeters are on that, um, 56 stitches, and decided that I didn't like it. It was too loose. Um, now, I like a pretty, like, I knit all of my socks on a zero. So, for example, the Brit sock from Nomadic Yarns on a zero, um, it is a chunkier fingering weight, and 64 stitches fit me fine. But um, the sock, the Gales Art sock blank that I did, 64 stitches on a zero, it's a lighter weight yarn. It's almost a light fingering weight. doesn't really fit me. Um, 
So they're going to my mom. Now this, because it's a sport weight, I started on the two and a half, didn't like the fabric, went down to a one and a half, 56 stitches. Um, and I had originally done a fish lips kiss heel in the teal, finish the sock with the measurements and it does not really fit. Like I can get it on, um, but the stitches are incredibly stretched out and the heel wasn't deep enough and there were just issues with it. So because I had done the heel, the, the fish lips kiss heel, because I had done it with the mini skein uh, or the mini, yeah, the mini skein, I was able to rip it out. I picked out until I could just pull and then there were a couple times where I had to pick out again because of how the fish lips kiss heel is organized. Um, and then I did an afterthought heel and I knit like four or five rows before starting the decreases. Um, and it fits better. Um, but it's this pair is still going to go to my mom. So I'm thinking in order for it to fit me really nicely, I'll do this weight of socks on a one and a half but it will still have to be a 64 stitch sock, which then to me, because I, I like the fabric I got with this. Um, so then it feels like sport weight socks aren't really any faster, but I mean, I guess the row gauge is different, so I don't have to do as many rows. Um, so yeah, there's just whatever it is what it is. Um, and this was kind of a learning experience. So I have started the second sock, but as you can see, I have just the ribbing, part of the ribbing, not even all of the ribbing yet. And then I'm going to do an afterthought heel again. So this is basically two full repeats till the toe, and then I do the toe and the heel in the contrasting color that they sent along. It is really pretty. I really like the colors. I really like the stripes. I really like the feel of it. I do like the base and I have a, a actually a good bunch of this in this base. Um, now I have, think I have like 10 skeins of lollipop or something. And most of them are in the beefcake base. I have like two in the traditional and one or two in the gripes or quintessential, which she renamed quintessential recently. So that was kind of this one sock ended up being a lot more work than I uh, anticipated, but uh, actually knitting, like I knit till, here the first day and then the second day I did the heel and all the way till like here um, and then the third day I finished this but then I had to rip out the heel and redo it which took a little bit of time so oh we may have a puppy no he's gonna go lay down and I'm keeping this in one of my fat squirrel fiber sock bags that I got Ooh, I just got a cold puppy nose on my toes bare toes Oof. that was cold um, so the next thing that I spent a lot of time on is the R&R &R hoodie by Tannis Lovely that I am doing in Cascade 220 in a purple color. So I have finished the body. I have done the sleeves, two little sleeves, and I am working on the raglan in decreases for the yoke. So I've gotten a lot of a lot of progress on this. I feel I feel like it's a lot of progress. Maybe it isn't, but I'm doing the I think I'm doing the 2 to 4 year size because my niece is going to be 3 this fall. So yeah, it's finally starting to look like a little sweater. I'm really enjoying it. I haven't knit a lot with Cascade 220. Um, not the superwash or really any of it much. Um, and I'm doing this on US, I did fives for the ribbing and US sixes for the body because I just, I like the, the gauge that this is knitting up at. And once I wash it, because it is super wash, it will stretch a little bit and I think it'll still be nice. So yeah, I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out. It is a little bit more of a ready purple than it's looking on the monitor. I don't know. Nah. Yeah, 
it's looking very bluey purple, but it's just a really nice kind of heathered purple. So that's that. I have used probably two full skeins. I have four total. Um, the sleeves took almost a full skein, a little bit less. Um, so this is one skein that I am working on. This is the skein that had the sleeves and you can't see it, but it's pretty flat. Um, I haven't weighed any of this, but I do have one more full skein. I have four skeins of this. I don't know where that fourth skein is right now, but it is somewhere because I bought four. I have four in my stash. Those are all of my whips. Um, I don't know if I showed this last time. I'm still working on the um, row cardigan for my sister-in-law. I am this far on the first sleeve. I am hoping to get a lot of work done on it this afternoon and this evening. Hopefully, we'll see how that goes. Um, I need to drink. And... Let's see. So, hmm. okay, so books. I'm going to talk about this book that I'm reading, and I feel like I can say quite a bit about it despite the fact that I haven't finished it yet. So, I picked up this. It is Unplug by. Susie Yaloff Schwartz. It's about meditation and it's supposed to be this ultimate guide to easy, modernized um, meditation. Um, now, this is a, it's a Heather's pick at Chapters, the Canadian big giant bookstore. Um, and that means that the CEO of Chapters Indigo Coles um, recommends it. And I, woo, sorry, dog just got off the couch and messed up my, because he's a jerk. Huh. Okay, so I have read most of it. And I feel like I'm at the point where it's given me the steps and then it's just kind of troubleshooting. Now my issue with the book, it's a book about meditation. Most people are not going to buy this book unless they are already interested in meditation and have maybe felt overwhelmed by the amount of information that is out there or um, how strict some people who promote meditation can be about you have to do it a certain way, etc., etc. So <clears throat> I was already fairly familiar with the, um, with a lot of the rules and potential benefits and, um, stuff like that for meditation. So this much of the book is basically just trying to convince you that you should meditate. And the rest of the book is like this much of it is the actual steps to meditation. And the rest is how to um, work on like issues that you're finding or um, encouragement to, um, yeah, I... I don't find it that useful. I picked up this book because meditation is something that I have thought about doing before and I figured it would be um, more helpful to me than it is. Um, but when it spends, like it's not a terribly big book, it's got about 200 pages, but it's quite small, right? Like it's like the size of my hand like height wise from the, like a little bit. It's not a very big book for 200 pages, $30 Canadian, $22.99 US and a hundred and 
10 of those pages, 115 of those pages, is convincing you that meditation is a good thing, that feels like a waste of my time. Because I bought this book in order to meditate, therefore I am already aware of a lot of the benefits. Um, so yeah, for me, if you are interested in meditation and you know nothing about it and you have not done any research, this would be a very good book for you. It breaks it down. It's very clear. It gives examples. Um, it goes over specific things that... Um, specific issues that you could be finding while you're trying to meditate. It's very encouraging. Um, it's very much if, you know, you're frustrated after your first one, let it go. Try again. It's about learning to refocus. It's basically a repetition of these six steps to meditate. You know, you focus on something and then your mind drifts. And as soon as you notice that there are other thoughts coming in, you refocus back on your first thing. It's very encouraging. So if you are interested in meditation and know nothing about it, this would be a very good book. It would be. For me, not so much. Because I have done a lot of research in the past on meditation. Um, it's just not as useful for me. So that being said, um, the dog just got off the couch again because he's a jackass. <laughs> um... If you would like this book, contact me and I, I will probably mail it to you because I do not need a copy of it. I really don't. Um, I guess I could do a giveaway for it. Um, sure, I'll put up a thread. <laughs> this is not knitting related, but it is something that I am willing to give away. So I'm going to put up a thread in the Ravelry group. Um, if you are interested in this book, please post and um, let me know what interests you about it or tell me about what you are knitting that you are in love with right now. Either those, one of those two things. Um, and I will draw a winner the next time I record, which will be probably, hopefully in two weeks. And then I will mail this out. How about we do it that way? because I don't have room for it on my shelf if I'm not going to use it um, or enjoy it. So there's that. Um, the second thing is I am in the process, as you can see, if you noticed, these sport weight socks are on red cable Chiagu needles, which I absolutely detest. Um, I don't like the cable on Chiagu, the red I don't like the metallic or the, the metal cables. Um, I, my cable and needle of choice is Haya Haya Sharps. I like the blue floppier needle. It's, I mean, I don't find it that floppy. Now here's, this is a good example. These are size zeros that I have out for sock knitting. That is the cable. These are the needles. There you can kind of see the tips. These are Haya Haya Sharps. Um, I love Haya Haya Sharps. I am in the process of replacing all of my needles with Haya Haya Sharps. That being said, I do have a lot of Chiagu needles because it's really hard in Canada. And I mean, I've been in yarn stores in Winnipeg, Saskatoon, um, all over lower mainland BC. It's hard to find Haya Hayas in store. Um, so I order them from the Loopy U. I've also ordered some from Eat Sleep Knit. Um, so in the past, I have bought needles from the store and they have been Chiagu um, red cable. I guess they're the lace. I don't know. Um, I hate them. I have them in all sizes. I have zeros, ones, one and a halves, two and a half. I think I have threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, and eights. I think um, I would like to get rid of them. So if you are interested in them, please send me a PM. Um, I'm not going to bother doing a prize for that. If you're interested in getting a starter kind of set of lace needles, I don't know the exact sizes that I have. I don't know the exact number I have. Um, and I'm, I wasn't willing to get them all out and show them to you now. Um, 
for the recording. But if you are interested, let me know and we can work something out. Um, so yeah, that is all I have. This was a shorter episode, 20 minutes. That's not bad. I'm okay with that. My dog's wandering around and being a weenie because that's what he does. Cyrus. 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 Come here. Come here, you. Oh, well, you don't have to come all the way to my face. This is my puppy. He's a stuck up. He's a lazy boy. And I love him very much. But yeah, he hasn't been. And now he thinks I have food. That's one way to get him to do what you want, is to act like you have food. No, I don't want toes. So yeah, um, woo, sorry. Oh, this is what kind of time it is? He likes to crawl onto my lap and lean on me when he wants to cuddle. That's how he cuddles. Um, so yeah, I will talk to you guys in about two weeks. I will put up that thread right away for that book, Unplug. Um, and I hope you guys are all enjoying what you're knitting. Um, enjoy your spring if it is turning into spring in your area and I will see you soon. Bye.